Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another video of checking out one of your guys' solar systems and today we're going to be checking out a system from the user Eternity in Discord so massive thanks to them for sending their system and the only thing they've put with their description in Discord is performance warning so without further ado Let's see uh, if we get affected by the performance warning. So, it's called the Viola Star System. That was quite a cool custom thumbnail, actually. I do quite like that. So, maybe if you guys put custom thumbnails to yours, I'll happily use them as the actual video thumbnail as well. And this one probably looks pretty good, actually. So, I'll probably actually put it in as well, because I do like it. Right, ooh. I could sense a bit of lag loading that in. Okay, right. It is runnable. I can sense a bit of choppiness, but it is playable. Okay, right. So, Simulation is best left pause. I think that probably is the best. Okay, so, right. Hello. Ooh. Okay, I quite like the structure of this. Okay, so let's go to the center as usual. Okay, so the Viola Star System, made by Eternity. Hope you like reading. Oh, we do a lot of reading around here on this channel. Right, so Viola A and B. A binary of two yellow giant and a yellow dwarf. The two are thought to have stolen planets from each other or even from other stars, as the age of each object in regards to their host age doesn't match up. These two so these two stars reside in an Andromeda galaxy inside a nebula known to us but as home to the Nadine Nadineans. Okay. Note. Some moons aren't included in the description under their host. Uh, luminous sites increase to enhance lighting. Legend. Akka as planet. Green is dwarf planet and dark blue is natural satellite. Excellent. The mythology coming soon. Click next. Alrighty. Right, so, first of the planets, we have Grave. Looks using a huge loss of material. Look at that trail. Oh, it's like a comet. Right, so, this is a hot tube. That's actually a really cool, that could actually make a really cool fun though, actually. Uh, this is a hot tube to have formed further out before the Grand Terminal 1.56 billion years ago, where it was part of a responsive for dividing the system from inner Viola A to Viola A slash B. That looks cool. Okay, next up we have got curse over here curse so that's where we started out or, or no no this was a different planet actually so the two stars are giving it a pretty cool look the embodiment of hell extreme greenhouse effect followed by the close proximity to its host star or hot star sorry gives the planet the perfect conditions to be deemed hell other than that this world used to orbit the nice frigid outer regions of the system so this is like a venus enhanced edition yeah that looks pretty monstrous doesn't it it's hotter as well Two stars, lots of trouble. Okay, so that is curse. Next up, we've got Alamarium. So, we're taking a bit of a jump out. I think we're going to this one. Okay. The two starlights really is interesting, isn't it, with the way the planets are lit up. A moderately habitable desert planet riddled with precious gems and stones as well as prestigious and strong metals. A great place to mine for valuables. So there's a mining planet in a way. Right, so where are we? So, we're going around, we're going to this one. Rosaria. Quite similar atmospheres on a lot of these so far. This is a sub um, sub oceanic super earth, relatively habitable and stable with a few natural disasters, including hurricanes and thunderstorms. Looking good. Quite a nice realistic feel to all of these atmospheres and stuff as well. I do quite like it. Right. Then we have Meadow. Is that going to be a nice, more habitable world? Let's have a look. It looks more, uh, looks more friendly. It's got a moon. A beautiful Hattel planet, for um, perfect for life and stable with a few thunderstorms and mild tornadoes. The Nadians have been watching this planet for a long time. Okay, it has a moon very close as well, Lena. Extremely close. Awesome. Look underneath as well. Very nicely done. Looking good. Okay, cool. Right, what's next? Right, so next up we're heading to Viola B now. So we're heading to the second star over here. I really like the way this menu or this um, text stuff is laid out. It's quite good, actually. Um, Stops me having to scroll and getting lost and then getting all confused. <laughs> right, first of the planets, we've got Vine here. Vine, Vine. A scorching hut Mercurium thought to be uh, Chofonia before evidence ruled that it actually got the core of a planet that got destroyed by another planet in an angled impact that wiped out the outer layers. Okay, so looking pretty hot. Next up, we have got uh, Nilavani. Oh, yes. A desert planet formed over time. Thunderstorms, dust storms, and tornadoes are the natural disasters that occur on this world. There it is. Looks pretty uh, wispy with all those clouds. Then we have Dawn, which is here. The home of the Nadians, a civilization that have learned over time to live in the twilight zone of its tidal locked planet. The Nadians have sent their first interstellar probe in hopes of finding a safe haven they can live in tranquility without worrying about limits. Cool. Okay. 
Yeah, I reckon day and light on there must be a strange old thing, orbiting that star and then having the other star lighting it up. And then we have uh, Nornia. A super ocean terror believed to be from another star system after information came back that composition of the planet doesn't match the others and the planet is deemed to be older than the star system itself. Captured rogue objects. Looks pretty cool. Then we have Vera here. Looking good. Look at the twilight zone perfectly in between the two at the moment. That's pretty cool. Okay. Then we have Valkyrie, which is this one. This sub-Neptunian world holds um, hope and beauty as not only is it half of a hattle moon, but itself is safe to hover above in case if the Nadians choose to live on the skies of Valkyrie. Okay, nice, uh, nice mint sort of green going on here. So the moon here, the first of a few life boats for the Nadians. Although its nature is very unfamiliar and almost alien-like. Cool. And then the other moon here, Veil. Vale. This moon is to believe to have... Ooh, oh, it cut it off. Okay, never mind. Had something. So there you go. Got a little asteroid called Molly there. Little dwarf, yep. Yeah. So where are we heading next? Is it over here? Yep. So uh, further out planets. So we've got Alorf over here. Ooh, look at those rings. That looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? Look at that. Ah, oh, yeah. Very nice. That's a pretty cool view. Ah, oh, yeah. Look at that. Got all three moons in one picture there. Let's have a little... Uh, Manual control. But got everyone in there. Everyone in the lock here. Okay. This colossal gas giant in the system frequently believed to have played a very major role in the grand turmoil by ejecting multiple planets and balancing the outer system and influenced the birth of inner planet objects to an extent. Nice. It's got its moons. First one is Nor here. The scorching hot moon orbited two coastal planets surrounded by rings of believed to be four moons. This moon is a doomed destiny. Oh, yeah. Then we got uh, Beluia. This, bear, this ocean world is believed to have been covered in ice before all it melts away due to radiation from the host planet. Nice sort of two-tone atmosphere on there as well, looking good. Next moon out. Uh, Nama Junas. This moon orbits in the Hathor zone if its host gas giant has a strong magnetic field, making it suitable for life. Nice. Cool. And there's a few other moons in orbit as well. These ones didn't have descriptions. Okay. Next up we've got Salem. third largest planet of the entire system is believed to have formed in a different quadrant of the galaxy due to its age and appearance. This interstellar traveller was captured by Voila B before the Grand Turmoil. Nice load of bands on that. So we've got uh, Sierra here. Some moons. Got Hyro here. Cool. And I think there's one more, isn't there? This one as well. Okay. Next up we've got ha Harius. Harris. Over here. Oh, there we go. Nice green. Oh, I really like the rings. Good customization of the rings in this one. This is a colossal cold terror that once formed in the inner regions where there was less gas and more dust. As this planet gained in size, it, it was ejected 1.56 billion years ago. Since then, it has gained in a companion and a stable atmosphere. Cool. We've got Serenity. Although it is not suitable for the for the Nadians, but instead for something more extreme. This satellite is expected to be geologically active and stable due to the far and stable orbit this moon has a sub-satellite. Oh, there you go. Leon. Nice. Oh. Cool. So next up we're heading to Amelia, which is here. Tilted on its side like Uranus. There you go. That's a good view of it. Oh, that was a really nice ring system. Look at that. Looks good. Really, really like the way that's come out. Look great. That's proper nicely detailed rings. Oh, that, that ring system would look good around an actual Uranus as well. That would probably come out really well. Um, but yeah, anyway, so... One of the many that has been ejected for the purpose of balance in the system. This ice giant was in part responsible for the chaos in the suburbs in the star system to this day sends comets into the inner solar system. Okay. Nice. So now we got the dwarf planets. We've got Arena. Be the green ones now, won't they? Yep. Cool. The largest dwarf planet of the star system is believed to have formed around Viola B due to its similarities in composition. There you go. It's got a moon as well. Cool. 
So then we got Dinara next up. She's over here. Those rings have strange names. Okay, so the older sister of Dolora believed to have a form together but been ejected. There you go. Then we have Dolora, the younger sister of Dinara, believed to have formed together before being ejected. Over here. So, similar looking appearance. Then we have Melina, one of the many ejected objects still clinging onto the light. All the way over here. Oh, really far away. All alone. I like the way that looks, actually. The colour on it looks quite good. And then lastly, we have Aurora. Which is the one with the blue trails. This is a full-on planet. Despite it being in the blue Earth planet section. There you go. Purple. Believed to be an interstellar traveller and is the hardest to understand. Among the rest... As is the oldest object in the system, older than the host stars, theory suggests this dwarf escaped a dune system after being launched out by a great impact that wiped out most of its outer layer, as this object couldn't have been this small since its formation. How small actually is it? Seven radius of Earth. Okay. Oh no, this one has a different name. Sorry, I misread that. It's Aurelia. There's one called Aurora as well. So this this Aurelia one... Oh, hang on, this one was the uh, one we read earlier. One of the many that had been ejected for the purpose of balancing. What was the one we read then? Oh, Amelia and then o Aurelia. <laughs> okay, and then there's Aurora. Right. So we just read the description for Aurora, which is, I'm guessing, that one with a really far orbit. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, hello. So that is that one. Hope you've enjoyed. Cool. Right, so that does it for this system. I really like the construction behind this, actually. I really like the ring systems as well. They look great. Put them all up together. Look at the trail of that material that gas giant's losing. That is wild. There you go. All the ring systems as well. Look at all the ring systems. They look great. I really like that one with the uh, rotating rings. Like that looks really, really cool. I don't know. I may have to make a custom farm out with these guys. I don't know. It looks really, really good. I really like the, the planets in general. Look quite a nice, realistic design. Actually, I really, really did like those. Look at those customization on those. They, yeah, they're all really nicely put together. You know, they're not overkill with the colours. It's a really nice, realistic appearance. I do like it. But yeah, that will send another everybody. Let me know what you think down below in the comments as well. Again, a massive thank you to the creator of the System Eternity for submitting this. Really enjoyed it. Hope you guys did as well. Let's, like I said, you can go for a nice big load of likes. Also, subscribe for more. Helps on the journey to 50,000 subscribers as well. And that will send down everybody. Make sure you have a great day out there. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.